In this video, I'm going to show you how to digitally stabilize your footage right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get right into it. Hey, what's up? It's Chris from Rucker Films. And yes, in today's video, we're talking all about stabilization in the edit. Now, it's always best to get a stable shot on set. If you have access to a gimbal, a glide cam, a steady cam, a Ronin, whatever it is, if you have access to something that is going to give you smooth footage on shoot, then I would always recommend getting smooth footage on the day because avoiding an error is always better than fixing an error. But if for some reason you have to go handheld and your footage is a little bit shaky and you need to stabilize it, then fortunately, Warp Stabilizer is there for you. So Warp Stabilizer is a plugin inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and it is very powerful, but it does have its limitations. So let's jump into Premiere and let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and we've got two video clips. The first one is considered good and the second one is considered to be bad. Now, although this first one is a little bit shaky, you can see the shake, especially on this wall over here. Even though it's a little bit shaky, the movement is still fairly smooth. And that is because I tried my very best to keep as still as possible when I was filming. I was filming with two hands. I had the camera pushed up against my chest to add a third point of contact. And it was relatively smooth. Although you can definitely still tell that it is handheld. The second shot, on the other hand, I filmed with one hand. I was wiggling around just a little bit and the camera is shaking all over the place. Now, Look what happens when we drop Warp Stabilizer onto both of these clips. So we'll go into Effects, search for Warp Stabilizer VFX, and we'll drop that onto the good clip to begin with. And Premiere Pro is going to take a minute to go ahead and read and analyze the clip. As you can see, this is the progress bar, time remaining four seconds, and we're done. So this is the good clip that I've just applied the effect to. So this was before, that was no Warp Stabilizer, and this is with Warp Stabilizer. And there you go, that looks really smooth and if you weren't on set, then you probably wouldn't guess that that was handheld. You'd think that was a slider or a gimbal. Now look what happens when we drop Warp Stabilizer onto the second shot. This second shot has a lot more aggressive camera movements. It's wiggling around all over the place and it's a bit of a reckless shot. As you can see, this second clip has got a lot of distortion in the clip. Yes, the movement is kind of smooth, but you can see this distortion up here. Look at this boat as well. There's a lot of distortion and a lot of vibration, it looks like, on that boat. And that is because Premiere is trying its absolute hardest to stabilize this aggressive movement. Warp Stabilizer is incredible and it can really help you out, but it definitely has its limitations. So when you're filming your footage, make sure to keep the camera as still as is physically possible. Add some movement into the shot, but do not be aggressive with the camera movements. Keep the movement nice and steady and really try your best to make the camera movement as smooth as possible. Now, let's go ahead and we'll delete the bad video clip for now. This is just a complete waste. We can't do anything with this. We can't really repair this clip. So we'll delete that and we'll just work on the good clip. Now, even with just the basic settings in Warp Stabilizer applied, this clip is really smooth and really seamless. But if we select the video clip and we go into the Warp Stabilizer effects, so we we'll go into the Effect Controls tab. In Warp Stabilizer, we've got all of these different settings and we're just gonna go through all of those settings for you now. So in results, you've got smooth motion or no motion. If you're moving with the camera, then you don't want to select no motion. You want to select smooth motion. But if you are standing with the camera in your hands, trying your very best to get a makeshift tripod shot, then no motion is really good because it's going to stabilize the camera and make it look like a tripod shot. Again, you have to keep the camera movement quite minimal. You can't be shaking the camera all over the place and expect really smooth, seamless shots. Now we'll go back down to smooth motion and in smoothness, we can increase or decrease the amount of smoothness that is applied to the clip. So if we increase this all the way up to 100%, then it's going to add a lot of smoothness into the shot. And in this example, it's fine. That actually really does help. But if the movement was a little bit more aggressive and you pull this all the way up to 100%, then it's either going to fail, the warp stabilizer just won't be able to read the footage, or it will look extremely fake. And in those instances, you want to pull the warp stabilizer all the way down to a smaller number of around 10%. 
But if the movement was correct in the first place, then all you have to do is increase the smoothness to around 50% or even 100% and the footage should look fine. Now moving down from smoothness, we have method and we have position, position scale rotation, perspective and subspace warp. Subspace warp is the default setting, but I'll go through all of these settings and show you what each one does. Position affects the position and obviously you can see it's wiggling around all over the place. So we don't want that one. Go down to position, scale, rotation. That's going to affect the position, the scale and the rotation. So obviously that is a lot smoother. This is very similar to point tracking inside of Adobe After Effects. Moving down, we've got perspective and this is not going to be the best. As you can see, we've got some jelloing on the wall in the foreground. It's bobbing up and down. It looks like we're on a boat. This isn't the best option. So this is where we would go ahead and select subspace warp. And as you can see, we've got this really smooth, really seamless camera slider from right to left. Now, moving down, we've got framing. And if we have stabilize only, then unfortunately we might see the black borders creeping up on the top here. If we go down to stabilize crop, then as you can see, we have a perfectly square video, but unfortunately we have a black border around the video. And in order to correct that, we would have to increase the scale after the stabilization which is another step, so we don't want to do that. If we go down to Stabilize Crop Auto Scale, it should fill in those edges for us. There you go, that looks really awesome. And then the last option is to synthesize the edges, and this is similar to the motion tile effect in After Effects, where it's basically going to recreate the edges of the frame. However, in this example, this did fail. I would seriously suggest Auto Scale. And then of course we've got additional scale at the bottom, but if you got the warp stabilizer right to begin with and it looks fine, you don't have to increase the scale to add this warp stabilizer. So keep this at 100%. And there you go. Those are the basic settings inside of warp stabilizer. And as long as you've got relatively smooth camera movement and you're not being really ruthless with the camera movements, then dropping this into Premiere and dropping warp stabilizer onto the footage will yield some really awesome results. So yes, even though you might not have a gimbal or a glide cam, if you're careful and you combine that careful movement with warp stabilizer, you'll get some really awesome and cinematic camera moves. So there you go. If you found this video useful at all, or if you feel like you learned something today, then please do help me out by pressing that subscribe button. You'll get rewarded in return by a brand new video every single day. So if you're subscribed, I will see you tomorrow for another brand new video. Thank you for watching.